You can listen to The Professional Left on iTunes, Radio Public, or at our website, proleftpod.com, where you can also contribute to this podcast. There's a PayPal button at our website, or you can mail us a letter and or contribution at P.O. Box 9133, Springfield, Illinois, 62791. This is the podcast for September 27th, 2019. It's not safe for work. Recorded live from just outside the largest lifeboat building project since the 2008 George W. Bush Dumb Kirk Rescue, it's the professional left with Drift Glass and Blue Gal. in our notes let us pause for a moment to thank the good and fluffy lord that people got out and voted in 2018 amen you know what whatever disagreements we have and we have profound disagreements um nothing that happened this week that advanced the cause of getting rid of donald trump would have happened if tens of millions of americans hadn't got off their ass and voted and and canvassed and campaigned and said money in and phone bank mm-hmm. for candidates right period that's just a it's it, cause and effect baby that's right. cause and effect mm-hmm. so let's do that again next year shall we yeah absolutely uh regardless of what happens let's do that next year uh yeah. vote out republicans local to national and uh, everywhere. everywhere everywhere and we had a very busy week this week in addition to all of the impeachment news yes many things happened we want to thank our listener greg who had Took us out to lunch, a very Mm -hmm. nice lunch. It had a great Uh, time. And I have to warn people who want to do that because this was kind of funny. (laughs) We're sitting there talking and chatting, and Greg had to interrupt me and say, "Um, I am a really devoted listener to your podcast. I listen to every single episode from beginning to end. Uh And so, no offense, but I've already heard all of your stories. (laughs) (laughs) Which... Yeah. Hey, and that was fine, you know. Hey, but... no, you haven't. So <laughs> I go to the B list. It would be, yeah, you, of course you know all about us. Yeah, that's, you know all about, about us. For... And that's the part. It is a, a one way. I have to remember it's a one way dialogue for mm-hmm. the most part. We do hear from a lot of listeners and I correspond back and I try to write back to everybody that writes in, but uh, as much as I can. But uh, that was that was helpful information to me to remember that, oh, yeah, if you've already heard all of this on the yeah. show. <laughs> I don't know if you know this, Greg, but Republicans are shit. <laughs> yeah. And we can prove it, too. <laughs> we, had a, we had a very lovely, lovely lunch. Oh, and, he's uh, a great guy. Yeah, we have a lot in common with him, as we do with many of our listeners, and it was just a lot of fun. And walking in, I was accosted by uh, people I work on various committees with who oh, don't yeah. know about my – alternate identity so it's uh-huh. always interesting and this morning i went to a, a a the thing called the citizens club and they had a, a panel on millennials this is not the white citizens club this no, no, is no. <laughs> it's, it's way too white i'm frankly yeah. but, but um, this this is a community yeah building interest in making springfield better club this was yeah. and this, this specific topic today was what do millennials want or what do you think millennials are and and mm. ideas and what do you like what do you not what's keeping you from just a general topic of discussion it was very fruitful and interesting but i knew half the people there it was yeah. so weird i mean i just i mean knew them i knew them by name one panelist called me out by name to say hey hey in the back there um so it was you know it, it was it's a a nice feeling um uh, of community and it's it's wonderful when we 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 can invite people in who aren't familiar with us through our podcast into our podcast world and vice versa right right wow. and and as i've said many times you are the town millionaire without the money yeah <laughs> <laughs> you start, everybody knows you everybody knows that you are about community improvement workforce development improvement making Springfield, a better place to live and work and grow, yeah. grow your family. I have the I have uh, the top hat and the monocle, but no right, money. but no money. <laughs> so we need we need you to become the dollar a year man who's actually got a salary and benefits. But yeah. I don't know if that's going to happen. But coffee with a coworker of yours? Yes, we did. Again, we had we had had dinner with Heather last week on her way to a business trip, and then she came back, and Heather had coffee with us yesterday. So we've caught up with her again. Busy, and it's busy for a small town. Busy, I tell you. busy. And, and I got called out by name this week also. Actually, uh, it was a month ago, but we we finally figured out that 
email address they sent this uh, cease and desist letter to. Yeah. Tell, tell uh, us. Tell us. Oh, my gosh. Diamond and Silk are threatening legal action against Francis Langham of Crooks and Liars. Mm-hmm. And apparently they sent this letter. I want to thank Kevin Holtzinger for writing us and, and sending me links uh, to Wonkett and Grant Stern. They also got a remarkably similar letter from, quote, Diamond and Silk's legal team, unquote. Yeah. Uh, the address of which is a strip mall in North Carolina. Not making that up. Mm-hmm. It is absolutely right out of Better Call Saul. Uh, and this uh, cease and desist letter demanded, first of all, that we not republish their letter, which we, of course, immediately did. Yeah, sorry, dude. And secondly, <laughs> that we take down a post that I did. Uh, which uh, at Crooks and Liars at Crooks and Liars, right? right. And mm-hmm. posts at Crooks and Liars, which I'm sure most of our listeners are aware, uh, is a video of someone yeah. talking, and then a transcript, often, and then a comment about what they said. Yes. And we have been asked to cease and desist from putting up <laughs> a video of Diamond and Silk because. It harms the diamond and silk brand. <laughs> yes. How dare you quote what I said? Quote directly. what I said directly and tell me that it's wrong. Right. So I did a post yesterday, Thursday, printing their letter in its entirety. Mm-hmm. Uh, and by the way, it is simply signed Diamond and Silk's legal team. <laughs> yes. And it is not sent by U.S. mail because that would be mail fraud. You know, it's it's not a le- it's not from a lawyer. No. Pointing out all of the case history of, you know, being a public figure, you have virtually no way to sue anyone for uh, damages. For Larry Flint, I like a word with you. Yes, yes. Larry Flint. Uh, ver- it, it's uh, Jerry Falwell versus Hustler Magazine. <laughs> you know, I can I can call Diamond and Silk people who have sex with their mother, as Larry Flint I- did. Everything but a child well. right. absolutely legal, yep. And yep. because they are public figures, uh, they they really have no recourse. It's, um, uh, unless I do something that is violent against them, you know, which clearly, if I incite violence against them, that is, of course, illegal. But any making any comment about anything they said is not. And so I actually gave them better legal advice with case law (laughs) references than their quote unquote legal team did. I foresee a new sponsor for this (laughs) podcast next week. Yeah. Have you been injured by someone quoting your own words back to you? (laughs) Contact. And we'll come up with a name. We'll come up with a name. I mean, a lot of people said Dewey Cheatham and Howe and Better Call Paul and all of those things. But we we will come up with something. Jay Cheever loophole because that's <laughs> Groucho Marx and that opens up a whole menu of things, you know. Right. One of the great quotes in that movie, by the way, was looking directly into the camera and saying, I wanna how do I get that money without the Hayes office getting mad at me? So right. but we really do need our own legal advertisers in we our do. fake um, podcast. We have everything else. We got food, we have flowers, we have going away party we have everything you can imagine but we don't have a legal team well yet, no so. legal team but we know what we do have drift glass um inspired have, yeah. by one of my twitter followers and also by the fact that donald trump 2020 and the republican national committee immediately started a fundraiser after nancy pelosi announced impeachment as if they had the letters already to go yeah and raised a million dollars in one day Wow, that's a lot of money. For, and the impeachment task force of the Republican Party. Like, By it was way, ready to go. <laughs> we're still living off of the gift certificate that we won from the local bar during we the... Are. We're still living off of that. Trivia contest. We're still working that, so... No, but one of my Twitter followers did suggest that I start a legal defense fund on GoFundMe. <laughs> and so, legal defense fund, unlike Diamond and Silk's legal team, legal defense fund is in quotes. Uh-huh. And... <laughs> What we are going to use the money for is the $418 medical bill that you got yesterday. Yes, yes. And uh, also, um, some of you already know this, but uh, my dad has cancer again. Yes. He was going to come and visit me this fall. Mm -hmm. He's never been to this house before, and I've lived here 10 years Mm -hmm. uh, because my mom didn't travel. And that trip has had to be canceled because he's going through chemo starting next week. He's been through this before. This is a site-specific chemo. 
he will be okay, but he's 83. Mm -hmm. And so we've, uh, I talked with the kids, the kids really want to see him. So we're going there for Thanksgiving. We're loading up the truck and going. We're loading up the truck and driving and it's a long drive. It's nine hours, but uh, we need to do it. And yeah. so the rest of the money after we've paid off your medical, your, <laughs> you know, your, your, Test. hey, his thyroid is okay, but here we need $418. Yeah. <laughs> um, once we paid that off, the rest of the money that we raise, if any, will go toward the trip of going to see my dad. Yes. So yes. Um, thank you for that. We appreciate it. Mm-hmm. And uh, if this is payday for you, this, you know, it's, it's the first of the month this coming week. If it's payday for you. Mm-hmm. Uh, it won't be payday for us unless uh, you're able to kick in five bucks. Well, we really appreciate and it. And this is, we do have to visit him f- from a legal consulting point of view. I mean, <laughs> part of the legal defense fund is, you know, the question, because the question is, Blue Gal, the question is, is what you did art? And he is a uh-huh. former art professor. Therefore, we can consult with him using, properly using the legal defense fund funds, which are, I'm sure, for there you go. at this moment. To consult with him to find out was me nailing diamond and silk to the wall art, <laughs> and he'll say it wasn't good art, but yeah, <laughs> sure, no, it was it was it was good art, blue gal. I, my it was good art. artist, and, and my dad's still at eighty three, a working artist. He had yeah. a piece in the Erie Art Show this year, yeah. so uh, he's not. He hasn't. If you follow him on Facebook, uh, if you know who my dad is, then uh, he is still yeah. doing drawing and printmaking and uh, you know never never stops so i'm very 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 proud of him yeah. great guy great and we we do get in touch with him every now and then you you do about uh, puzzles so oh he's a new york times he does the new york times puzzle and ink every day just yeah sharp as a tack welcome to my world uh, people so well. yeah <laughs> wonderful guy stay on your toes at all uh, times shall we move on to uh happier well, subjects i wanted to i wanted to dovetail this a little bit because uh, you have been wonderful to me in hugging me when the word cancer gets to be too much for me and I start crying. And I'm not going to do that, by the way. Greg Greg said to us at lunch, when you cry, I cry. And I wanted to thank him for that. I know there are people who feel that way about me and I love you all. Thank you. Um, but I was thinking about this week and how quickly everything unraveled and how quickly things moved toward impeachment and Nancy Pelosi and, you know, Starting last weekend, yes, uh, the word came out about this quid pro quo thing and him asking for a Trump asking for a favor and and immediately social media just went, oh my gosh, you know this is all of a sudden a Nancy Pelosi problem was what I said. Right. Right. Not you know it it's been a Donald Trump problem for two years, but now it's really turned over to this is Democrats have to do something and and very quickly they all caught up with us yes. on that yes. and. And I thought about it in terms of, you know, there has been a cancer on our democracy called Donald Trump for two years and more. And and we can talk about the cancer of the Republican yes. Party. I'm just talking very specifically about removing Trump yeah. as an analogy. Mm-hmm. And we have said something's wrong. Something's wrong. Something doesn't feel right. This is, doesn't seem right. This is, We've had specialists like Robert Mueller come in and say, yes, this isn't right. Yes, there's a problem. Yes, this is a growing problem. This is very bad. And Mm -hmm. it's very bad. And finally this week, some surgeons showed up and said, yes, this has to be removed. That doesn't mean that the pain is over. That doesn't mean that we have more uh, tests and surgeries and resistance to that. And there are cells that are going to have to be eradicated after the surgery. Mm -hmm. And, and, uh, you know, there, there's a lot of denial going on in the human family of the United States. Yeah. And uh, it is that analogy fits in so many ways. But finally, we do have a team of people who, unlike Paul Ryan, yeah. <laughs> are actually taking the power they have to start to do something about it. Yeah, all of that is true. And Republicans want to make sure... Okay, whether that's true or not, we get to keep chain smoking, right? I mean, right. that's okay, right. right? Can we? No, right. you the, you have to stop being you. You have right. to stop right. being right. this. The thing that caused this has to be stopped as well. Mm-hmm. And no, yep. this is the this is the day that it bursts through the rib cage. 
right and came out in the open and the big you know sweaty bloody alien head stared us in the face (laughs) oh oh yeah that's really bad that's gonna grow and it's gonna eat the crew and maybe we should stop it right now i would like to read you if i may my revision to the constitution yes you may (laughs) uh and i'll be very specific this is article one section two clause five the house of representatives shall choose their speaker and other officers and shall have the sole power of impeachment and that's where it currently ends. I revised it to include as long as an insane clown president publicly hand delivers a smoking gun to them on a silver platter. Right. Donald Trump right. has been doing impeachable shit since the day he was inaugurated. And I have absolutely no doubt that he would go right on doing it if he hadn't pulled a pin on this grenade and then put the grenade on television and then put the Constitution on it and then sat on it and then dared people to do something about it. Right. It was, right. it was, and I understand how he did that and why he did that, I believe. Well, and all in an effort to take down Joe Biden. Right. Which, if you understand Democratic politics and where we are in the primary process and how early it is, is he has made so many mistakes just based on his own personality that he believes that the white guy in, is in his way. Right. And, and whoever the, the leading person that is being talked about on television is the one that he needs to worry about. And so uh, you and I were watching uh, some MSNBC program where they were talking in great detail about the different people in the intelligence community walking in and out of the White House, checking with where these documents were, doing all kinds of things and and that all of this was in the whistleblower's report Mm -hmm. of multiple people that he has spoken to who confirmed each other's stories independently. And I said, I turned to you and I said, and all of this was done during executive time. Yes, it was. (laughs) All of the time he's sitting there watching Fox in his bedroom. Who are all these people Uh, walking out of here? What are you doing? Never mind. (laughs) And now, now he's, he doesn't know. Right. And he's, this is we're recording this on Friday. And Donald Trump has lost his mind on Twitter, of course, and screaming, mm-hmm, that, mm-hmm. you know, Adam Schiff should resign. And I was in, it's a hoax. Just every crazy thing you can imagine. And it's all secondhand. That's why you can't trust it. This is a guy mm-hmm. who every, virtually every lie he tells, he supports by saying many people, many people have told me, <laughs> many people, you know what? many people with credentials have told the whistleblower that you are, you are a criminal and extortionist. Mm-hmm a traitor and need to be removed from office immediately. And, and you went on television and admitted the whole fucking thing. And That's released the tra- yeah. release the write up of it. Yes. Well, yes. This is what I'd like to spend a little bit of time talking about. If you don't, sure. um, as you might know, many, many years ago in, in the land, that time forgot, uh, I coined a term called uh, uh, an expression called the tribe that rubs shit in their hair. Right. And uh, it, it failed to catch on with the kind of fire I had hoped for. <laughs> So you're going to try again. I'm going to try again. I'm just going to keep beating this horse. Um, but it's 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 shorthand for how debased conservatives and Republicans have gotten generally over the last mm-hmm. 30 years. Um, they only interact with each other. May I may I interject sure. that we have had uh, multiple letters and tweets from people this week asking us to talk very specifically about what happens to the Trump cult Yes. once all of this is over. And there are two things to talk about. One is defining the problem as the tribe that rubs shit in its hair, which you're going to continue with. And the other thing is lifeboat building, which we'll get to in a few minutes. We're going to talk about this, what how Donald Trump, I believe, will react and how the base mm-hmm. will react. Mm-hmm. And I think because if you want to know about impeachment, turn on a radio, you know. <laughs> It's, yeah, it's yeah, everywhere. Right. You can't avoid it. And there's a great, uh, enormous amount of detail being passed along through cable news and regular news and open a newspaper, which that's a conversation we can't really adequately add to. But I think what we can do, because we've been doing this for so damn long, uh, writing about mm-hmm. Republicans and thinking about it, is talk about how it is that, that Donald Trump came to believe that he could just say this shit and release this transcript and it would mm-hmm. be okay. And it's because he is the ultimate crazy Uncle Liberty. He is. He, he is, is the the <clears throat> pinnacle of power given to crazy Uncle Liberty. He is the he is the chieftain of the tribe that rubs shit in their hair. There you go. And he lived because they live among each other. Now, this is something if you live in DC, 
if you are a, an op-ed writer or a pundit, as we have learned over the last 15 years or 20 years, and live inside the Beltway, it's a complete mystery to you because you've never- Or Manhattan or, as well. Yeah, Manhattan or yeah. LA or, or any, any place that is inside the media bubble. All of mm -hmm. this is a complete mystery to you because you've never met an actual Republican in your whole life. You have mm -hmm. met David Brooks Republicans. You have met a small clique of elite, mostly white, mostly beard stroking, interested in the stock market, concerned about their portfolio Republicans who who believe none of the shit they tell the base. Right. There's, there's, right. there's two sets of books. There's one set of books, which is the bullshit you feed the base. That's uh, Solyndra and Benghazi and Vince Foster. Mexicans and, are rapists yeah. and they're invading the United States. And yes, this, right. And this, these are done by executives at Fox News and executives on How on Hate Radio and the leaders of the Republican Party. And this is Newt Gingrich's whole shtick. Just keep mm -hmm. dumping poison into the body politic to keep the base dumb and paranoid and racist and terrified and willing to do whatever you tell them to do because you scare the shit out of them and you've turned liberals like me into demons who must be destroyed. Republicans understand that's one set of books. The other set of books is what they really want to do, which is cut taxes, get rid of social uh, social safety net programs, deregulate everything, and pack courts. That's all they care about, mm -hmm. money mm -hmm. and more money. And that's it. That's all they care about. They don't care about the planet. They don't care about their neighborhoods. They don't care about you or me or your kids. They, that's all they care about. So to get the second thing done, they have to keep – they have to get elected. They have to keep getting elected. So they need a base – that is dumb enough and dangerous enough and paranoid enough and frightened enough to keep going to the polls under the belief that Solyndra, Baby Parts, Spence Foster, blah, 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 blah. Right. And so they- And they need the courts to protect their minority power. Yes, exactly. So they need keep, to- Keep gerrymandered districts going and uh, voter suppression going and make sure that whatever, if their base turns out and votes based on fear and freaking out- Absolutely then they'll win because and a, and they a, suppressed everybody else. And, yeah. a key, and a, a key part of this is when George Bush's administration was riding high, they were completely in favor of Bush. He was the greatest president ever. The minute it collapsed, they, 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 they all flipped on a switch and suddenly none of yep. people ever heard of George Bush. And then along came Barack Obama. And Barack Obama was everything that you would want in the temperament of a president. His policies I have a problem with, but he was calm. He was rational. He, he, he wanted to cooperate, and that wouldn't do. So he needed right. to be the greatest tyrant in the world. He yep. had to be the worst fucking president, most from lawless. From month one, from but, January yeah. of 20, 2009, yeah. he had to be a tyrant. A lawless, yep. Kenyan-born, communist cell tyrant. Um, and, of course, they'd already have a base that had been – uh, self lobotomized to the point where they would mm -hmm. believe anything. They believe that because they needed to. Because if it was true that Obama was a decent guy and, and Bush was a, a, a lunatic and a disaster, that means that everything liberals said was true, and they'd rather blow their heads off than ever admit that. So that can't ha that that can't be allowed. So Obama's a tyrant, a lawless tyrant who has czars who do terrible things and want to come and kill your grandmother and make your kids gay. All of this shit they believe. So what does that mean now? Well, it means, according to Donald Trump, because Donald Trump ingested all this shit and believed all this shit and doesn't really care about the second set of books, doesn't really care about – he. Just, he's the first candidate who fed the right directly, the first major candidate to give them a direct cardiac needle to the brain right. of all the bullshit and bile and racism that they have been craving from a leader for decades. He gave it to them straight, uncut, exactly what they wanted. And what, what does that mean? Well, it means that – the presidency is a lawless institution, and since Barack Obama got to be a tyrant and break the law all the time, I get to do it too because there's no consequences mm -hmm. to this. I'm going to break the law whenever I fucking well feel like it because that's what a president gets to do because Obama got to get away with it. Nobody impeached Obama. And so Donald Trump really believes it's okay to do this shit because that's what a president gets to do because he believes mm -hmm. that that's what Obama did. And all of his cult followers believe it too. These people have spent so much time in a cave together, passing this bullshit back and forth among each other and, and congratulating each other and stroking each other's egos. On air. They tweak their paranoid fantasies a little bit more, a little bit more. Pizzagate, did you hear about Pizzagate? Um, crowd well, that's, that's what I wanted to add to this, which is there are a group of Trump supporter conservative inside the bell jar uh, 
crazies, I would say. I mean, not putting I'm not putting a real fine point on that, but who still want outsider status, who still want that sort of secret. We have secret knowledge that you don't have. And that was fine during Bush and fine during Obama. You know, we know about the real birth certificate. We know about the secret moving of Obama's baby body from Kenya to the United States under wraps, right? And all of a sudden, Donald Trump rips the entire blanket off of that. Mm-hmm. And it's just perfectly fine to be out in the open yeah. conspiracy theorist. But we still, there are still people who want to feel that they have secret truth. So we've got QAnon for those people, right? And, 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 <laughs> every time, and this is a consequence of conspiracy failure. Right, Cause, right. Cause, cause let's face it. Everything Republicans do is terrible. Every policy <laughs> sucks. Every time they try to do anything. When they have hard. policy at yeah. all. Right, and right. This is from lying into the wrong war, destroying the economy, and pissing away surplus. It's a long, long, long list. And so it is, since it is uh, congenitally impossible for a Republican to admit they're wrong, the only thing they can do is broaden the conspiracy. Oh, it mm-hmm. must be a bigger conspiracy. It must involve literally everyone except me and my nine friends. Right. Everyone right. in the world it's, it, now they're in a Philip K. Dick novel where the entire world is conspiring against this poor little group of of white saviors who want to save America from the the brown horde. And Donald Trump is the first president who has completely ingested the poison mm-hmm. and has taken it to heart. So that's why he's over in in uh, Ukraine, saying or on the phone with the, the president of Ukraine, going the crowd strike thing, the the server. Yeah. You have that, right? Yeah, it's like, right. And, and you have you have Vince Foster's body, right? You can fly <laughs> it back here for, we know where it is. We've yeah. seen the documents. And he's yeah. gone full Alex Jones. And right. he, there is no one left around him or in the Republican Party anywhere because either you're Hugh Hewitt and your head is so far up his ass that you can't mm-hmm. see daylight. Or you've, uh, you've decided to become uh, Joe Scarborough. In which case, yes. you know, uh, Donald Trump's always been a, a Democrat. He's, he's a Democrat. Democrat. He's, he's a Democrat. Democrat. And we're, and he said this morning, morning Joe said this morning, you know, Republicans on the Hill loathe Donald Trump. He's crazy. They don't like him. But and he doesn't get to anything after the but, but you know, yeah. but he's a Democrat. He gave right. to Chuck Schumer. He gave to elected representatives and senators from New York. So, of course, they were Democrats. And yeah. he did that to buy favor and influence. He's an opportunist. He's an opportunist, yes. Yeah. And if he, if, he would be, if he would have been uh, in, in the 1800s, he would have given to the Whig Party. Anybody yeah, who right. can get him access to power, he's willing to pay him money. That's, that's yeah. who he is. So he can stand on a stage with a big check or stand on a stage at a charity ga- golf tournament and be accepted and – Hillary Clinton will come to his wedding, you know, yeah. and that makes him a powerful celebrity in New York City. So, well, and, and that's the thing: the, the the crazier and more despicable and more uh, the more ludicrous the shit in their hair gets, right? The more they earn the the praise of their peers. And so, Donald Trump really thinks he had a perfect phone call. It was beautiful because it met all the criteria for a sh- tribe that rubs shit in its hair thing. It's look what I did. Look at this great. I, you know, I'm, I'm giving Russia to, I'm giving the United States to Russia to own the libs. Right. You know, and, and there are 30, 40 million Americans who think that's perfectly okay. Perfect. That's why, that's why his, his numbers will never drop below 38%, 39%. Right. And that's, that's why probably, impeachment is 49, 49 right now. And that's as good as it gets. Yeah. That and is as good as it gets. And it's yeah. never going to get any better than that. You've got you've got to get over the fact that, that you'll ever reach these people. This is something I had yeah. a little disagree with norm ornstein today he was because norm ornstein i like him and we do ch- actually exchange oh, we honor there. him absolutely he's a, he's yep. a, one of those people who was right uh, about the right for a long long time and it cost him uh, materially and professionally because he, he was shut out you know can't be saying that shit that's true on the air you'll you'll fuck up our ratings uh but there are too many people like him who 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 say don't he re- doesn't Trump realize don't these people realize uh, I think he was talking about Matt Gitz specifically that mm-hmm. they will look like fools if they just stand <laughs> up and rant for thirty minutes and don't have any facts to back them up and I always ask the same question fools to, to who whom? to whom <laughs> yeah the base loves this shit you gotta and this is what is so um, frustrating is. You and I live in the world and we really do understand these people and how they think and how they react and how they will react, which is our next topic. Um, but people inside the beltway s- still make this mistake that, well, of course, if you make this big a fool of yourself, 
if you if you shit yourself this badly in public like do you remember the bush administration yeah at you all how bad yeah. things got and how horribly horribly wrong they were and all the people who were horribly wrong and fucking terrible from uh rich lowry and jonah goldberg and michelle malkin to hugh hewitt to david brooks all of them still have jobs Right. All of them still have jobs. There's no penalty for being that fucking wrong. You'll get promoted sometimes. So quit thinking that some threshold will be crossed beyond which these people will simply have to admit that the right is insane because that mm -hmm. will never happen. It will never happen. The demography will have to sweep these people aside, not right. reason, because reason is they have given up reason. So that was that was generally speaking, the tribe that rubbed shit in its hair and why Donald Trump doesn't understand why he did was wrong, why his base do not understand why he did was wrong, and why Fox News, frankly, is cracking up right in front of our eyes. They they are having a civil war right now, or or at least there's cracks in the hull of their ship because they have to make a take this very large Trump TV ship mm -hmm. and pivot it at some point, and they're going to have to throw over the side of the ship. Janine Pirro, mm -hmm. Tucker Carlson, Laura Ingram, and Sean Hannity. Now, Hannity is retiring right. in 2021. Uh, but these uh, this shadow TV cabinet that Donald Trump has, there are just too many receipts Yes, uh, that we all have video clips of them bowing down and praising Trump and praising, and uh, they cannot turn the ship of fox against uh, trump without jettisoning these right. very popular hosts and now but that's that leaves leads me to the next interesting question mm -hmm. the 30 percent or so of the population who needs this like a drug right and who will go insane if there's not someone in a suit on tv telling them that they're patriots and mm -hmm. everyone else is a traitor mm -hmm. they they're going to go someplace well there are a number of clues out there from the past that we can look at to see what what they're going to do. They will go someplace and they will spend money there. Right. So there's a market for them. And that's why right. I look at CNN, I look at Fox and go, some someone in the cable news business is going to find a way to tap into these people because the Republican Party still needs them for votes. Well, and, and so let's look at the clues right. as to where they might go and yes. what might happen. One of the clues is Romney is going to win in a landslide. Uh -huh. At the end of the 2012 election, <laughs> the Fox News for three days prior to the election promised their viewers over uh -huh. and over again, I see Romney winning in a landslide, getting 300 electoral votes. Uh -huh. I think Romney's going to win with 280 electoral votes. And then, of course, Romney lost. And it was a shock to the system. And the five, their show, The Five, uh, admitted on the air. Yeah, they are. We lost our audience for a while because they thought they were lied to. Right. It was it was a provable in real time. You promised us and then it didn't happen moment. And what happened? So They came yes, back. They, did. they came back because Obama is still there and he's the threat. And where else are we going to go mm -hmm. for our daily fix of Obama is a tyrant? Right. We, Fox is the only game in town. Now, mm -hmm. Donald Trump tweeted a few weeks ago when he was feuding with Fox and not liking the way they were interviewing a Democratic spokesman. Uh -huh. You know, I think we're going to have to move over to One America News. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> Donald Trump endorsing One America News. Think about mm -hmm. that. The, the so-called president of the United States deciding that this web publisher of conspiracy theories again, you know, the people that want absolute undying loyalty to the Donald Trump cult, as long as Donald Trump is alive, are going to find somewhere on the internet to get their news. Yes. They will. And, they'll, and they'll find some way to monetize it. Because right. people are and those people will find some way to monetize right. it. Because exactly. The, the, those people still want to buy reverse mortgages and dick pills. As we say. Right. Right. And people right. still want to sell them to pens. And they still, wanna, mm -hmm. they still want to still want their votes. <laughs> my pillow. Right, votes. right. My pillow is going to put their advertising dollars on. And, and I would just yeah. point out um, something I tweeted yesterday. And I, I, I don't usually read tweets on the podcast because it seems like cheating a little bit. 
I will say, <laughs> it's cheating a little I will bit. Say yesterday, there was this perfect moment because you and I do a little drive by of Fox News every now and then just to see mm-hmm. what is going on in the alternate universe. And we put on our hazmat suits and we go, okay, let's go. In, in a 30 second segment, uh, we watched Ken Starr on Fox News citing Carl Rove's op ed in the Wall Street Journal. Uh, as brilliant. As Nancy Pelosi's <laughs> circular firing squad. <laughs> it was horrifying in its perfection. It was just, but who are, let's go down the list of people. Who are people who should never be allowed to show their face in fucking public again? Well, I'd, I'd list Ken Starr at the top of that list. Yeah. Our world <laughs> who swore that Mitt Romney was going to win on the top of that list. Yep. And the absolutely. Wall Street Journal should be, you know, should be run out of this country on a rail. But there they all are. In the, in the living rooms of millions of Americans talking about Nancy Pelosi's circular firing squad. And all I could think was, they're all together in the bunker now. And the, <laughs> and the doors, they are. And the doors yes. are locked behind them. Come on, Jim Brown. Come on, Jim Brown. Come on, Jim Brown. <laughs> but, but that's the point. The, the, nothing is going to stop this from reconstituting itself under some new guise. Because there's too much money, too many yeah. votes um, depending on it. Um, so we can accurately predict that these people aren't going to go anywhere and they're going to find someone, maybe the Breitbart people will fire something up. I don't know. Yeah. Find some outlet to talk to. Now what Trump will do interests me. My mom back in Watergate, uh, the Watergate days, uh, I recall her saying she was concerned that Nixon would roll tanks in the streets. Yeah. Um, Yeah. I think a lot of people were worried about that. I don't think Donald Trump is going to be removed from office because I don't think that you're going to find, um, enough. Republican senators who were, are going to vote anything other than present. Right. Um, unless you, unless Mitch McConnell can find a way to make it a secret ballot, there's no way. Or unanimous, which also I think is near impossible. If it can be a voice vote, if it gets that bad, where he just says, okay, everybody raise your hand because we're going to get rid of this guy before the Iowa caucuses. If that becomes the decision, then yeah. But that... That's that unanimous vote in the Senate would shake the world. Yeah. Well, and and that and then comes the question: Does Donald Trump leave the White House physically? Yeah, right. And yeah. I'm guessing no. Yeah, he would have yeah. to be physically removed from the building, which leaves President Pence uh, to be president for five minutes mm-hmm. uh, before they're, they're completely swept out of office. Now, the third thing is, whatever happens, this is a catastrophe for the GOP temporarily. Right. Yeah. So, what will happen? to the Republican Party in 2020. Well, we're already seeing that, aren't we, Drift Glass? Yes, we are. <laughs> and that's why we led off with the largest lifeboat building project since the Bush years. Yep. We're what we're going to see um all of because all of my um crazy uncle liberties in my life have gotten really quiet. Which they do. <laughs> yep. They do. They suddenly get very quiet and want to talk about the Cubs mm-hmm. and want to talk about the good old days. Want to talk about cars. They don't want to talk about politics. Occasionally, they'll be in a, a – but you can just tell this uh, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez stuff is not doing it for them right. anymore. They remind me – the physical manifestation of what they're like is was Trump's speech at the UN. Mm-hmm. They're just reading the fucking lines. I'd rather die and be elsewhere. It's just this zombie recitation of obligatory talking points that you just like, oh, geez, he's just he, – he doesn't want to do this job anymore. Yeah, and – so, and he thinks that talking slow and deliberate and like I'm dead is presidential. It, they're going to find another Bush off machine. Right. Or they'll try. And they're, they're working on it right now. And really, liberals, fellow liberals, brothers out there, sisters out there, our job this time has to be. Because the New York Times is going to take the lead in this. You oh, know they gosh. Because they did a both they're, sides headline this week. They did. They did. Um, they did. And they it, published... It, Information about the whistleblower. They doxed, partially doxed the whistleblower oh. and then turned around and said, what do you expect? We're great. We're the news. Mm-hmm. Again, setting off a million jokes about, I'm sure glad Deep Throat didn't go to the New York Times. Because, right. you know, th- this is, and this is, this starts at the top. This is Dean Beckett, who is ab- clearly, well, see, here's the thing. He is up to the job he was hired by the Schulzberger family to Absolutely. do. Absolutely. Which is to, to completely... You know, throw up the barricades, appease everyone, um, have a bunch of hot takes, uh, keep Brett's – and this is something that happened this week. I'm skipping around a little bit, but it does bear on the subject. Um, while we were all paying attention to the impeachment fireworks, 
Brett Stevens, as the gypsy woman predicted, <laughs> uh, scuttled right back onto the op-ed page of the New York Times for his shitty, shitty, awful, this is, liberals are making a huge mistake, Democrat, actually, I, I think I have it written down here. Yes, Pelosi's yes. bad Brett impeachment Steve call, the speaker's haste may end up helping the president. Right. Yeah. And, and so for all of the hue and cry um, over Brett Stevens' incredibly um, awful, uh, despicable, Twitter meltdown. Filthy, yeah, yeah. Uh, it was take on you know on on seeking out a college professor and then getting hysterical over being called bedbug and then basically saying it's it's as bad as the Holocaust uh, and going on TV and doing it and then stomping off of Twitter. From my remove, having covered his elder brother David Brooks for fifteen mm -hmm. years, going on fifteen years, now, I knew nothing was going to happen to him. Yeah. There'll be no consequence yeah. there at all. There'll be no consequences at all. But what, because, so what do Democrats need to do? Uh, we need to um, do exactly what happened to Donald Trump after he said crazy things uh, in public. Mm -hmm. uh, we need to find the pressure point right on the carotid artery of the, the media and push their heart. Right. When, when, when you see a lifeboat builder, it can't be two or three people tweeting and a couple people emailing and posting. But if you get several hundred people dragging someone on Twitter, mm -hmm. if you get several thousand people making a hashtag out of Joe Scarborough, he's not a fucking Democrat. Right. Right. Um, eventually they do get the, they do get the, the word. It might be for a day or a week or a month, but, and here's where I take a little bit of, of uh, a small pleasure, a little bit of joy. If you go to the Merriam Webster dictionary, <laughs> the place that has, has dumpster fire, but doesn't correctly attribute it to me. There is a new word in the Merriam-Webster dictionary. Would you like to tell people what it is? It's both siderist, right? It's both sides. Both sides. Both sides. See, it should uh -huh. be both siderism, but it should. Both both sizing is acceptable to me, yep. um, and it, it's defined as when equal coverage leads to uneven results. Yep. yep. Um, we we made it, guys. We're famous. <laughs> we did it. We did um, it. The, the term both sides, both siderists, both sides do it. And this is, believe me, we're, we're one small um, wave in a tide of, mm -hmm. of people who've been doing this for a long, long time. Right, right. But both sides do it's now a punchline. It's a punchline. And uh, we should mention Chuck Todd taking a yes. little sip of drift glass juice this week with yeah. uh, Senator John Kennedy of Louisiana, who wants, yeah. who wants it to be both sides and 50-50. We should be investigating both sides. Right. And he and just lost it. He lost it and said, look, we have invested. NBC News has investigated these claims. The timeline, by the way, of Joe Biden's son and the corruption that was investigated do not match up. You no. cannot put Joe Biden's son in a place where this natural gas corruption happened two years before he was there. So... No. It's just, it's a nothing story and it has been investigated and it's a nothing story. Sure. So investigating Joe Biden is not going to happen. It's the, the, on day one, you can say the crime occurred two years before he showed up, period. That's it. Well, and, and you, but you identified the, the correct pressure point. The pressure yeah, point right. is, are people in the media who decide what we will talk about and how it will be balanced and covered. Um, right, right, right. It was the reason Hillary Clinton got clobbered. For, there, there are lots of reasons. One was Benghazi, 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 Benghazi. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. Matthew Dowd, Matthew Dowd, who during the who was the chief political analyst for ABC News and who blocked me for asking hard questions like this and called my readers and listeners stupid for listening to me, um, said publicly that. Anytime you talk about Donald Trump, you have to talk about Hillary Clinton. You know, period. It, whatever, yep. whatever you cover, you have to do both at the same time or you're not being a good journalist. You're being naughty. Now, mind you, this is, you know, uh, the last month or two or three, he's been, I don't understand all this both sides stuff. It's bad <laughs> journalism. We it's should bad, just talk about bad. the truth. <laughs> and I'm glad that he has had a, yet another psychotic break because he used to, this is the guy who was the architect of Bush's win in 2004. Um, so he, his, his life has been a series of psychotic breaks from previous personalities, and I understand that, and that's fine, and I, I'm glad that he has seen the light. What troubles me immensely is that part of the weapons that the media uses against us is 
strategic forgettery. Right. The idea that well, Matthew Dowd has a past and his past is full of really shitty, awful things that should have disqualified him from his job. And they didn't and they don't. And I'm fine with the fact that he now has woke up, but I'm not fine with the fact that he doesn't acknowledge that the past happened because the people who, who can obliterate the past as a subject for discussion are usually the worst people in the world because they don't want to talk about the past because they don't want to talk about how we got where we are. And Jeff, we, I'm, just, I'm just wondering if we have not been given the secret uh, index card that tells you that part of the rule is you never excuse you never bring up what a pundit said yesterday regardless i mean we know that's the david brooks ironclad rule that i yes, came up with right it is but it, maybe it's the truth for everybody that this is the rule of washington dc you are here for hot takes on today's news and if you were wrong three weeks ago nobody gives a shit and if right. that's the rule that should be stated that all you are getting from tom friedman is whatever pops into his head today and he has no memory of what he said yesterday and you should not either. Right. And, and you know what? Um, I'm sure there's a, a term for this psychological disorder. Right. Exactly. <laughs> you, you have, exactly. I mean, no yeah. short, no long term memory. Brain, no it's a brain disorder. Right. It but, does not teach us anything. That's the but, point. Yeah. And, well, and Orwell said, I think he controls the past controls the future. Right. Well, and also, you know, if, if you repeat a mistake over and over again, you know, the the inability to remember what you learned yesterday is damaging. Right, right. right. And, and one side does this as a matter of course. Exactly. And policy and, one, and, and benefits one, from it. Yep. And the, the, the intermediating entity called the media allows it to happen because it prospers from it happening. Because if you take those individual data points that, let's say, someone like David Brooks has had. Mm -hmm. And you plot them along a curve, they always bend in the same direction. David Brooks is never wrong in the direction of, of saying maybe liberals are right. right. Maybe liberals are right. His his take is always both sides are very, very bad. Both sides are in fact his headline this week that, that went right under uh right under uh Brett Stevens was yes, <laughs> Trump is guilty, but impeachment's a mistake. Yeah. This political brawl will leave Trump victorious. This is the same guy who told his readers. Uh, in 2014, the Republican Party has finally purged itself, cleansed itself. Of Bush, yes. Of, of, no, of, of, uh, of, um, of Sarah Palin. Oh, wow. Of all the crazy shit. No, they, they, the Republican Party used to be weird and strange. People were freaked out. But that's all over now. That's all, This yeah. was literally months before Donald Trump announced for the nomination. This is the same yep. guy who said, don't worry, it's going to be Rubio. It's going to be worry. Rubio. Everybody calm yeah. down. So if you plot th uh, David Brooks or Hugh Hewitt – or Brett Stevens, or any of these clowns, uh, data points over time, what you find is they're always wrong. So that leads me to ask the same question I think I started off with is, what is it about the wrongness of David Brooks's takes and Brett Stevens' takes that leads the Schulzberger family and Dean Beckett to hire them and keep them right. on staff and just pretend it's not going on? And I really do believe, if I can share with you one quick story. Mm-hmm. A, a local wingnut acquaintance of mine several weeks <laughs> back uh, overheard me talking with a friend about the New York Times and the bias. And, you know, I'm, I'm always up on my goddamn soapbox everywhere I go. When I'm among yeah. friends, mm -hmm. you know, this, this personality comes out minus the swears. And uh, this was during, I think, Brett Stevens' meltdown. And he came over and said, yeah, the reason Brett Stevens is on the New York Times, writes for the New York Times, is they won't put any goddamn real Trump supporters. <laughs> uh, on the, and you know what? And you know what? There's a lot of wisdom in that because yeah. um, if the New York Times wants to repres accurately represent the opinions of, of intelligent or well-spoken or political factions, political um, parties, beliefs, ideologies on their op-ed page, um, Brett Stevens and David Brooks represent no one. Yeah. Except a bunch of plutocrats in Washington and a and bunch of uh, Manhattan, right, presidents, right, right, um, all right. of whom, none of whom have ever met a real Republican in their lives. Elite college, you know, deans. That's about it. Um, people who go to Aspen Institute and TED Talks. That's all they talk about, and and they all have the same opinion. This very narrow gauge opinion. They so I'm sure someone has mentioned to Dean Beckett and to the Schulzberger family that there's an entire Republican Party out there in the world that that runs for office and has people like Matt Getz 
and and Louis Gohmert and Mitch McConnell, who are truly evil people and who have a huge following. And there's this guy named Rush Limbaugh. Have you heard of him? And there's this guy named Sean Hannity. Have you ever watched what he says? And those voices are the true voices of the Republican Party in this country and have been for 30 years. Now, the New York Times has two choices. Actually put someone as despicable as Matt Getz on their op-ed page and just let him run. Mm -hmm. Or continue to lie to themselves and lie to their readers and pretend that David Brooks and Brett Stevens represent anyone and to give them all the time and space and money and opportunity they want. And no matter how badly they fuck up, keep, keep pushing them, keep pushing them, keep them up there, which because those two guys and the, the people like them across the spectrum do exactly what that tiny, tiny band of, of elite media media people want them to do they right. tell them fairy tales mm -hmm. they tell them comforting stories about an imaginary american imaginary republican party an imaginary unity an imaginary uh, uh polity that doesn't exist and they really want it to exist so maybe if they clap loud enough and they keep putting these idiots on op-ed boards they'll they'll wish them into existence meanwhile we're out here going i, I cannot believe that the america's newspaper of record sucks this bad so consistently every week that you can predict how badly they're going to fuck something up. Oh, and they I, I could do. not have predicted that they would put both sides in a headline this week. I didn't well, know it would get that bad, but it did. Yep. And the, 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 what they, what, and the, they, they mix that up with various six guys in a rural diner stories. Right. <laughs> right. Know? Who, who they've been inter interviewed countless times before. Yeah. And That's these are people that have, uh, attended Trump rallies 23 times, have a picture of Confederate heroes hanging in their living room, and yet they are portrayed on the new pages of the New York Times as swing voters. Right. Or it Washington is Post. absolutely yeah. predictable. Washington Post as swing voters it is right. absolutely predictable. These are lifeboat builders, and we've got to burn the lifeboats. Drift class, we are running out of time. Let's roll, uh, baby. I want to make sure we mention Rodney Davis, our congressman. Yes. who you call him inert carbon Rodney. Very good. Yes. yes. Uh, he thinks impeachment's a big waste of time, you know. Uh-huh. Uh, and uh, <laughs> he issued a stern letter condemning Democrats for using a, quote, political consultant, unquote, to advance their, quote, liberal agenda against the president, unquote. Yes. What yes. he's referring to is the 30 minutes at the end of Corey Lewandowski's freak show when Democrats used an actual prosecutor to cross-examine Lewandowski and catch him lying and humiliating himself over and over again and admitting that he lied to the media repeatedly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's, that's what he got mad That's what that's Rodney what got, Davis Rodney got Davis about. will get up on his hind legs about. Um, the other item that I want to make sure we don't miss is uh, Newt Gingrich is this uh, week busy promoting his daughter's new book entitled yes. Our Broken America, Why Both Sides Need to Stop Ranting and Start Listening. I, I, Can't I we all just get along, Drift Glass? New Gingrich's daughter. Kid. His yep. daughter has a book called Our Broken America. Our Broken America. Why, can't, why do we yell at each other? Why is yeah. it so sad? It's I because of it was, my dad. That's my why. Dad, my dad is the devil. My yeah. dad is the devil. That's yeah. why. That's why she when, should have called her book My Dad is the Devil. <laughs> when I when this was sent to me, I thought it was a parody. This can't no, possibly this can't be, be true. Yes. And it is. Yeah. It is true. Anyway. Uh, I, she has inherited her daddy's shamelessness, is what has oh, happened. Yeah. yeah, we call that um, we call that chaining. <laughs> yes. uh, <yeah. laughs> Honest to God, she's Liz Cheney as a mother and a patriot. I can predict she's yeah. going to stay in the house because she likes being a big fish in a little pond. She I, does. She's not. She's not going to make it to the Senate. Okay. Each week we post to our Facebook page and website an internet kitty sent in by you, the listeners. But this week's internet kitty is a bunny oh. the bunny's name is whisper and of course freshly poured hq is expanding their variety of pet foods almost weekly so you can count on the fact that whisper eats freshly poured rabbit food our fake sponsor <laughs> whether you serve pet store perfection or dollar store dreck your rabbit will sit on the kitchen floor or wherever you put your rabbit and demand that the food they eat is only freshly poured Freshly poured, freshly poured. Oh, my Lord, it's freshly poured. And you can visit Whisper. Whisper is adorable. 
You can visit Whisper at our Facebook page or website. That is also where you will find links to our GoFundMe page. Uh, I will also be putting that up at my blog. You can Google Blue Gal. Uh, Our legal defense fund is up and running. (laughs) So (laughs) go right up. You'll enjoy seeing the picture I've put together of Roger Stone and Diamond and Silk and other luminaries of the Trump administration, Mm -hmm. (laughs) along with me sitting in the background for my legal defense fund. Uh, and you know, you can send your internet kitty or other pet to us at our email address, proleftpodcast at gmail.com, where you can also write to both of us. Feel free to write us. We love hearing from you. Be aware that if you write us at any of our addresses, we reserve the right to read your email or U.S. Postal Service, go postal unions, letter on the air, unless you say otherwise. Don't forget our gourmet coffee guideline. If you can afford to buy an espresso-based beverage for yourself, buy one for us. This is not charity. This is our job. And I know this is uh, the first of the month coming up, and that's payday for a lot of people. So if you can make it a payday for us, we certainly appreciate it. Approximately 1% of our listeners support this podcast with a contribution, and you can too. See our website, proleftpod.com, for details. We have PayPal, postal address, Patreon. We have swag that you can buy, merch. Uh, both sides don't t-shirts we definitely it, recommend you get one now show. they're hot but yeah <laughs> the christmas is is coming soon all the holidays are coming up and it's going to be the hot gift for give one to everyone in your family at thanksgiving right. including yes. crazy uncle liberty wearing a both sides don't t-shirt would be yes. adorable you send us a picture of crazy uncle liberty wearing a, a both we'll sides don't t-shirt, t-shirt. <laughs> you get a bumper sticker that's all i'm saying yeah Please share our show on social media. And thank you so much for doing that. Hey, Drift Glass, how are the Internet Kitties doing this week? Oh, Blue Gal, the Internet Kitties want to promote their upcoming book, Our Broken America, why Newt Gingrich and his daughter need to be fired into the sun. Yay! Let's think about living. Let's think about loving. Let's think about the hooping and the hopping and the bopping and the loving, loving, loving. Let's forget about the wine and the crying, the shooting and the dying, and the fellow with a switchblade knife. Let's think about living. Let's think about life. The Professional Left Podcast is recorded under a Creative Commons license. Copyright 2018, DGB.